Thank you for joining us tonight for the GPAC post-game press conference. We have head coach Justin Wick and student athlete Joshua Brown from the University of Minnesota Duluth. The Bulldogs advanced to the championship game of the 2023 NSIC Men's Basketball Tournament after defeating at Northern State in tonight's semifinal game. We'll start off with an opening statement from head coach Justin Wick and then open it up for any questions. Coach? Yeah, I guess first of all, uh, that's a great game, right? They're, uh, Northern's an awesome team, uh, one of the best in the country. So. Um, I get a lot of credit to them. Uh, hopefully, we'll see them again next weekend, or not, whether we play them or not. But they'll be in the regional for sure. So, um, got a lot of respect for for them and playing in this building against them. It's tough. So, uh, first and foremost, um, great game by them. Um, but just proud of our guys. Um, first half, I thought we were really guarding. Um, you know, get a little bit like yesterday. Our shot selection in the first half wasn't great. I think we had nine turnovers at halftime. Just challenge them to move the basketball um, and try to have. A, and I think we talked about having a. You know, having a nine to two assist turnover ratio in the second half instead of two to nine the other way, right? So you, you look at those stats afterwards, and uh, I think we had nine assists and two turnovers in the second half, and that's the key to us, right? If we take good shots and share the ball and screen people and all the basic stuff of basketball, uh, we can shoot 62% from the field. So um, not really. We made a couple threes, but um, made pretty much every two point shot we shot in the second half, in the second half. So um, just an incredibly, uh, I'm super proud of this whole group. Uh, we've had a lot of different guys step up on this stage these last two days, and I know our guys are hungry um, to try to win that title. But it's a one game at a time thing, and you're going against a, going against a juggernaut here in the semifinals, and um, just a huge win for us. I know our guys will be ready again tomorrow. Uh, no matter who we play, we're looking forward to that championship game. Coach, you emphasize how tough of a task it would be defensively yeah. uh, to stop, you know, Northern State, uh, and particularly Jordan Belka and Sam Mastin mm -hmm. combined eight for 22. Uh, I think that speaks for itself, and you also held them as a team from three, just three for 23. I mean, how much, I mean, what goes into your defense, and how does your defensive philosophy really shine through in a game like this? Well, I think a lot of it comes down to our toughness, and admittedly, uh, defensively, we haven't had it all year, and I think... Um, or you know, we've, we've, had, we've had it in spurts, and um, I really challenge our guys. And really, when we played Moorhead about four or five weeks ago, uh, it was one of our most intense defensive games we played. And we got the locker room afterwards, and I told them, this is the standard. If we play this hard on defense, we got a chance to beat anybody. And that's what you need to do this time of the year. So to the credit of our guys, as we've gotten down the stretch here these last four weeks, man, they've played incredibly hard on the defensive end. Hasn't always been the prettiest thing offensively, but you know, honestly, as long as we play hard and win those one-on-one -on -one matchups um, to the best of our ability, you know, it wasn't perfect. I mean, they got some guys that can score, but um, these guys have really ro uh, risen to the challenge of playing super hard on the defensive end, and I think that's what allowed us, has allowed us to have uh, two pretty big wins here on this stage. Josh, I mean, going into the half trailing, um, you guys never seemed like you were. There was no panic. There was no. Uh, wavering from from your from uh, you know you and your teammates can you explain what the halftime discussion was and what allowed you guys to come out in the second half with that energy and that spark that you showed um i think to speak on that part about never wavering um there was a point in this season where we were really up and down had a bunch of different weekends where we were going one and one and then it was on a bus ride back home where we just had a team discussion and we talked about, do we want to be great? And are we willing to do what it takes to be great? And so I think that conversation and that discussion kind of built a lot of maturity for us. And so now, after that point, we've been able to talk to each other, stay focused, stay committed to being able to <clears throat> work through adversity all the time. And so now today, we had 26 points a half weren't really playing good basketball, was, weren't sharing the ball that well. Like Coach said, we had like two assists and nine turnovers. And so we just got in there, talked through what we could do better. Everybody's mature, everybody's, we're kind of a veteran group now. So everybody just stuck with it, stayed mature, and just came out in the second half and did what we needed to do to win. You also said uh, down on the floor that you know your shot wasn't really falling, but you never stopped taking it. What was the encouragement? Was there encouragement from your teammates for you to just you know hey continue looking for your shot, continue to to try and you know take those looks when they're there, and you know maybe you'll be able to get one fall? Was was that kind of the, the discussion on the bench? Um, I think in the first half, I was I was more of trying to force my way into the game, and then in that second half, just letting it come to me, 
um, getting good looks, uh, opening lanes up, driving downhill. So it was a lot easier in the second half when I let the game come to me instead of trying to force my way into it. Coach, uh, 54 points in the paint, and you know I heard you throughout the game in, in, in different huddles and breaks, mm -hmm. emphasizing paint touches, emphasizing three, four passes instead of one pass shot, two pass mm -hmm. shot. How much of a difference does it make for your offense when you're able to get three, four, five passes as opposed to those one, two, you know, maybe try to hit a home run type shots? You know, what kind of, uh, how does it open up your offense and allow you to do what you're able to do? Yeah, good question. Um, it's a double-edged sword because we've got a lot of guys that can go get buckets one-on-one, -on -one, quite honestly, right? And um, there's times during the season where you can just put your head down and go. But um, what we learned, I think, as a team last year at, you know, in, in these games in, in the NCAA tournament, when you're playing the best teams in the country or in your conference, um, you're not just going to go get buckets one-on-one. -on -one. And um, I think we've – it's not perfect. So I'm not saying it's perfect, but I, um, we've started to learn our lesson a little bit and understand when you're playing these top-level teams. Um, most of the time, you just can't catch and go. And we did it a lot in the first half last night, um, a lot of different guys. Um, we did it a lot in the first half tonight. I felt decent at halftime. We get in there, and we're guarding pretty well. Um, and I told them if we can just move the basketball, um, you know, we used Drew as a screener. He said about five or six back screens on some plays we just drew up that we didn't have in. But um, they were hugging him so much that I think Maddie got a couple layups at the rim. He got an open three because he set a good screen. So, um, you know. As a coach, you're trying to instill confidence in these guys. They've got the green light. You ask him, like, what, is, you know, what do the coaches say? What do the guys say? Everybody's got the green light because they put so much time into it. Uh, they work like crazy on their game. So they, they know uh, we all have confidence in what they're doing. Um, but sometimes you get, a, a, you get against, against these good teams, and you got to work that basketball a little bit. So uh, we're learning. We're growing. You talk about maturity. I love as a coach. I'd love to take credit for organizing that team meeting and then bringing them together. That was all them. I, I, I didn't even know about it for a couple of weeks. Um, I remember coming to practice and I told a couple of guys like you guys just you guys seem different like you guys are locked in and that was I think it was right after we played Northern and we haven't lost since so um, as a coach you'd love to, I'd love to take credit for it, but that's all these guys and it shows uh, the maturity it shows how these guys really take pride in our program um, sometimes I just got to stay out of the way and, and let these guys be the players that they are. Another one for you, Coach. Uh, a name you mentioned there, Matt Thompson. Yeah. Um, I, I took a look at his game log throughout the year, and I mean, yeah. his minutes have been up and down. Yeah. And, you know, I think, I believe he had a 30 point game. I forget which one he had a 30 yeah. point game, but he's some games he hasn't even played, some games he plays eight minutes, some games yeah. he plays 30 minutes. Tonight, 19 minutes, four yeah. or five from the field, eight points, two rebounds. But it felt like he was always the right place, by the, right, yeah. place right time. Big crucial block on a back cut that I think really turned the tie. Can you speak yeah. to what he was able to give you off the bench tonight? Well, he's, I mean, he's one of the best athletes, like just straight athletic and um, how high his motor runs 24-7, how hard he plays here on, on this stage in the semifinals is how hard he plays on a Monday in practice. And he's been that way. Uh, geez, I've been watching him now for five years. He's a local uh, Duluth East guy. So you watch him play. I'm um, taking my son to all these games and uh, you're watching this guy just work his butt off. And um, <coughs> when you, you go from 6'4 to 6'7. Um, his dad was an All-American here and uh, he plays just like his dad. Um, just crazy athletic. Um, but his intensity is off the charts and his um, defensive ability is off the charts. So the offense comes and goes. Um, he gets a lot of his stuff playing off these other guys, which is fine. But for a redshirt freshman, uh, you know, I talked to him this morning at shoot around. I asked him what he thought of the game yesterday. Uh, you know, he played 10, 12 minutes and didn't score. He was fine, but he goes, he goes honestly, like it was, it was different. Like it was, it was faster, it was more intense. I think I'll be, a, I'll be in a better spot. And sometimes those young guys just have to go through that a little bit. So I'm glad we got the win yesterday. He had a chance to kind of uh, refocus and, um, He's got a chance as he as his career goes on. Um, he's going to be a special player for us as his role continues to get bigger and bigger. Our last one for, for the both of you. I mean, how does it feel to be on this floor? You'll be competing for a championship again. You know, same place as you were last year. How does it feel to be back in this spot with a chance to to win it? Yeah, go ahead. You can go first. I mean, this is what we work for all year, just to be in these moments, these big moments. Like we live for this. I know. Last year we lost that game down to the wire and that one hurt but we're back here now and so we're just whoever we play we're ready to go out there do what we can to win yeah and I'll just I'll just finish it up like the same thing as last year it's pretty dang cool to have 
um, both our men's and women's teams in these finals for two years in a row. So uh, Mandy's been killing it for a while. We're just trying to play catch up to her. But, um, you know, we've uh, we've put ourselves here for two years in a row and um, nothing's guaranteed. We're going to have to have a big time uh, effort no matter who we play. Both these teams are really good. Um, but it's kind of cool to have four North teams, you know, us, us, uh, us teams in the North that got a little chip on our shoulder. So um, to have these four teams in the final four, I think it's cool for, for us in the North. Um, and no matter who we play, Bemidji or, or, or the Dragons, uh, it's going to it's going to be a battle. So we're looking forward to it. We got to get our rest. Um, but this is what we play for. This is um, this is why these guys came to Duluth. These guys jumped in on a vision before we had really won very many games at all when I first got here. And uh, a lot of these guys jumped on just uh, trusting that we we're going to get here and play and play in these moments. Um, so I'm happy that th these guys get a chance to do it. Coach Joshua, thank you for time tonight on the GPAC post game press conferences and good luck in the championship game tomorrow night. Right. Thanks, thank sir. you.